Hi fellas, quick lesson on hollowing a large complex sculpture. Uh, I've begun, this is a, uh, the work that you may have seen in the previous video. Uh, this has already begun to be hollowed over on this side. You can see here uh, that I've hollowed this head, this arm, and I'm going down um, this entire chest is hollow now. Uh, this sculpture is lowered down to the ground and uh, so I can work from above. It's meant to be seen from below, above your eye line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hollow this head and neck so that after I can slice open this chest and hollow that. So what I'm going to do is show you very quickly how to slice this open, hollow it out, and glue it back together. Uh, and so I call this a, a window process or a, um, a, a, a process of hollowing that um, doesn't require me to gut the whole thing all at once. I can chop little holes or windows into the work and um, hollow as much as I can and then re-glue um, and then wait a little while before I continue. So I'll show you that now. The, the first tool you'll need is a wire tool. And what I'm going to do, you might think normally, oh, I'll cut the head off like this, where you might, the, the way you might do it for a skull or a, or a portrait. But what I really want to do is cut horizontally as much as possible so that when I take this off and I put it back on, it's held in by gravity. Occasionally you can't do that, so what you have to do is either put some sort of a key into it, which would mean like a, a, a complex line in when you cut it, or, or you uh, put a little hook on there to, to, to hold it up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to leave a key when you're, when you're cutting this open. So I'm just going to, and I'm going to cut off, um, there's, a, there's a, a pillar of clay underneath here that I'm going to leave. So I'm going to cut a lot of this off um, right in half so that I have access. And I also want to have access to this neck so that I can dig down far enough so that I can um, connect those holes on the next cut. So I'm going to cut this here. Now it's pretty, it's uh, pretty dry. You'll also notice that I'm cutting this open early on in the process, well before I'm doing a lot of the, a lot of the surface work. I'll talk about that more later. But so now what I'm going to do, I'm about halfway through, and then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a. I'm not worried about that ear, because um, again, I haven't really done a lot of the surface work yet. So I'm just going to give, pull it up a little bit and then maybe down a little bit just so that when I put it back on I can, I can um, have access. Now when I get to here what I don't want to do is slice it off with this thin little sharp edge. What I want to do is bring it back up fairly square. So I'm going to pull it up like this and then pull it square as much as I can. That way I don't have this kind of uh, flayed or sharp edge and so that I can pull this whole whole thing off um, it's impossible for me to put it back on in, a, in an incorrect way and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it to the side for now and I'll hollow that second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, the tool that I like to use, which is a, just a sharp gouge tool. And the sharper the better on this, because uh, uh, you know it doesn't put as much pressure onto the clay. And I'll start hollowing. And the first thing I might do is just give myself like a gauge line. And I'm leaving about, on this small section, this is a, a smaller head, you can see compared to my hand. It's um, maybe less than half life size. And um, I'm going to leave, you know, a little bit thicker than my finger. And then I'm just going to hollow it like this. Recycle my clay. 
I'm going to dig down. Now, I this pillar may end up being hair, but it also may end up being eliminated. So, uh, and that's fine. I'm still going to dig into it because um, I'm assume I'm assuming my composition is done. Usually, what I like to do is when I'm confident in the composition of my my sculpture, which in 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 my case is is a very complex sculpture. Um, once I'm confident in, I really start to think about hollowing, because if you hollow when you're you've done a lot of surface work, well, you usually obliterates it and, and destroys it, and your clay is much harder. Now your your clay does have to be hard, and you can notice that this is not you know certainly not leathery hard, but it's hard enough to hold its form when you cut it open. It's not going to fall apart by because you're eliminating structure. Um, it's you know uh, it, you you just have to feel it. It's a feel thing. You can press on it. Um, you can. It's also a, a, a point where. That surface can be hydrated with, you know, a spritz of water, and you can bring it back to a form that's that's usable, for, uh, particularly for sur uh, surface work. Um, so it is a feel thing. You don't want to do it too early, and you don't want to necessarily do it too late. So, so I'm hollowing. You can see how I've hollowed that area. Now I'm going to hollow the other area the same way. I'm going to leave approximately the same amount. Now this is hollow and what I'm going to do is a couple other things to prep this for, for re-gluing. Um, I also mentioned that I want to dig down in through the neck. So what I will, if it's a very thin neck, um, one of the things, one of the only things you can do is jab a pin tool down in there. But in this case, I'm going to get a smaller gouge. And I'm going to press it in and twist it you know, act as a drill bit, and I'm going to clean that, open that up as much as possible. Eventually, I'll cut this whole chest off and empty that. out, And then my next tool will be my pin tool. And the pin tool is a way of popping any air bubbles that are in the clay. The reason we're hollowing is not just to make this lighter, but to also make it dry more evenly. If you have a very thick section here and a thin section there, this will dry quicker than that, and uh, it has a tendency of, of uh, cracking. But also, uh, not just water is bad for kiln firing, but air bubbles are bad for kiln firing. Um, air bubbles uh, tend to pop in the kiln at high temperatures. So one of the things we're going to try to do here is pop any any air bubbles or cavities that are caught into in the in the clay. Um, and that's one of the reasons or the main reason I'm going down through that neck so that there is a venting all the way from the cavity I'm going to build here. I'm going to use a, um, a tool that will uh, add texture to the edge. So what I'm going to do now is is reseal this and there's a process to do that. Uh, it's called scoring and slipping. So I'm going to score this edge all the way around. You can see I've already done it there. And I'm going to score this edge. And this is just a normal tool. You could use any tool, even um, even just the pin tool by scoring over and over again. This is just a heavy texture tool that I would go over top of that 
surface back and forth all the way around as much as possible. Um, what we're really doing here is if this is a nice uh, clean slick surface um, the new the slip won't have anything to bite onto and there'll be a um, the um, the clay will have memory of that crack so what we want to do is confuse the clay in, in a lot of ways by giving it a lot of tooth in there and um, then what we're going to do is we're going to add slip and all that slip is is uh, clay that has a lot of water in it and the way to make that up is to have dry clay crumbled into uh, water and in this case I've added a little bit of uh, white vinegar which I think helps um, to open up the pores of the clay a little bit more. I've heard that said. I don't know the chemistry behind that, but uh, it seems to work better with the uh, the about a maybe five percent uh, vinegar. So I'm going to put that uh, slip all the way around, and you can see here that that I'm patting it. I'm not smearing it. I'm patting it on there so it it somewhat builds up. And uh, then I'm going to put it on the other side. So now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put that back on gently at first and then take it and give it a good compression. And then the la last step in this section really is uh, a process that I call uh, suturing or just stitching it back together which means um, doing a lot more of this confusing across that gap. So your clay, your clay has to remember the other section. And so the next step after this is just to leave it just like it is. Don't try to smooth it or anything. Just leave it as it is and uh, um, wait for maybe an hour before you do anything else, work on the surface. Let those two sections get to know each other and remember where they are.